President Biden has signed a bill to declassify COVID origins intelligence after the White House repeatedly declined to say whether he would. The White House release reads, the president signed into law the COVID-19 Origin Act of 2023, which required the director of national intelligence to declassify certain information relating to the origin of COVID-19. The president says he'll continue to review all classified info relating to COVID-19's origins, including the Wuhan lab, and will declassify and share as much of that as possible while protecting against the disclosure of information that would harm national security. And that's the concerning thing because, so they're saying they're going to declassify stuff, but we all know the government is knee-jerk in favor of privacy and a lack of accountability. So they'll, it, they'll declassify useless things, and if there's something the public really ought to know about, they'll just keep that classified. So this is not, mm -hmm. this is a great gesture that I'm glad Biden signed this. I'm glad it was unanimous in thinking that this should be declassified. Obviously, there has been intelligence reporting that has been reviewed by multiple government agencies and that led some of the government agencies, not all of them, some, many government agencies think the animal spillover is more likely, uh, but some government agencies, the FBI and the Energy Department, have reviewed intelligence and it has caused them to think that a lab leak is the more likely explanation for the origin of COVID. And it's frustrating because we can't access that intelligence. We're relying on their assessment of the intelligence. Mm -hmm. So it would be great if people, scientists, everybody, got to review that intelligence themselves, decide for themselves about whether they think lab leak or animal spillover or whatever is more likely. So again, that's good, and I, I want access to that information. I think that people should have access to that information, but there are so many, you know, <laughs> there are so many ways. The government is not is not very good at declassifying things. Yeah, I mean, we just went through this rigmarole a little bit with the declassified Kennedy files, right? They were supposed to be, I think, declassified as of 2017. Trump declassified some of them. Biden just declassified some others at the end of last year. But there are, there is this remaining, mm -hmm. um, you know, subsection of documents that are being released in this drip drab fashion. And the rationale is always these kinds of uh, national security rationale, even from an assassination that happened you know, 50 years ago. So, right. uh, I, I Because our actions you... could be, uh, the actions of government agencies, which are still around, could be embarrassing, so they don't want, you know, why would they, they're never going to choose freely to subject themselves to anything approaching potential embarrassment. And that's a major issue here, because one of the theories, the lab leak theory, does potentially involve some wrongdoing on the part of U.S. government agencies and the kind of research we funded. You know, this is a question we put to Dr. Robert Redfield, former director of the CDC, when we interviewed him uh, yesterday. Let's actually play a little bit of that clip. You know, Dr. Redfield, you were one of a, a, a prominent government health advisors uh, who came out and, and said, you know, what you thought about the possible lab origin, uh, lab leak origins of COVID, um, a view that was really highly stigmatized, I think, for a long period of time, particularly in the media where, where pol uh, political figures and other health uh, officials who really just raised the possibility of it, um, you know, were, were kind of, were, were, were likened to a, it was a conspiracy theory, that sort of thing. Now that the, the Energy Department has made its conclusion, the FBI as well, that they're expressing you know, low confidence, admittedly, but that it, it, a, a lab origin being more likely. Uh, I'm seeing people discussing it again in the media. What do you make of this period of time where it, you were really not even allowed to, to express that view in polite society? Well, I think the whole approach, uh, particularly by the leadership of NIH, I've said this before, was antithetical to science. Uh, you know, I stand by my testimony that I did recently, uh, and I know Dr. Fauci, Tony, has some disagreement, but he's incorrect. Uh, and I did speak with him in January and Jeremy Farrar about how important I thought it was that NIH lead a scientific investigation into the two hypotheses, spillover and lab leak, and do it aggressively. Uh, so that we can use science to try to understand what what uh, the origins of this virus was. And instead, rather than lead an open, transparent um, scientific debate where both sides were represented, very rapidly within the first week of February, they went to basically totally support the spillover hypothesis. And you've seen that even with the paper, The Proximal Origin, 
even with a consensus uh, on their phone call, even with a letter in Lancet that referred to people like me as conspirators because I had a different point of view. And so there I had asked him, you know, whether we can even trust government uh, health officials and scientists to properly vet a claim that then calls into question whether their priorities were correct and, and would, and even if, and would ultimately maybe cause them to get more accountability in the future because we'd be unwilling to just kind of let them do whatever and fund whatever projects uh, in China or anywhere else that they want. So of, of course they're going to be a little uh, uh, not potentially able to to fairly, you know, be judge and jury for themselves. Yeah, this is an ongoing issue. This is an issue that came up in the context of the Nord Stream uh, mm -hmm. explosion investigation. I recently yeah. interviewed Ro Khanna asking, well, do you support any kind of international independent body doing an investigation, even a congressional hearing into the investigation of what happened there? And there was this real reluctance from Ro Khanna, from the um, U.S. aligned members of the U.N. General Counsel to not want to support any kind of independent investigation. And the public is left asking this question. Are you able, ever able gonna, ever going to be able to accurately investigate yourself? I wanted to ask you about this, though. What do you make of the fact that there was un unanimity in Congress in voting to release this information after years now of interest in lab leak theory being a largely partisan interest, uh, at least among elected officials? I mean, my, my fear is that it's unanimous because it's totally harmless, because mm. they're not actually going to declassify anything of note and importance. And if, if, uh, if uh, political figures thought you know, their ability to get funding for pet projects or for scientific research was going to be impacted by you learning that here's what they funded and here's what happened, then they wouldn't vote for it. You don't think there's some kind of— I could uh, be wrong. That's know, just my hunch. bigger shift that's happening here? There's with, definitely a bigger shift with, happening. With Biden, yeah. Yeah. you know, administration officials, Biden uh, agencies coming out, at least two now, saying that it's more likely than not that lab leak uh, is the origin. You don't see that, that that is part and parcel of a generalized openness to lab leak theory among Democrats, elected Democrats. And if so— what does that mean? I mean, to what do we attribute I think, the shift at this moment? I think that shift is occurring. Although I will say, the I'm not sure elected Democrats were necessarily the most hostile to the lab leak. It was really the media mm -hmm. on, I guess, the advice of some government scientists. Um, that that's my recollection. I don't. I mean, I've I've gone through you know all the headlines from CNN and other places saying you know why you're a racist conspiracy theorist if you believe in the lab leak theory. I actually don't remember a lot of specifically Democratic senators saying that. It might be the case. I just don't remember it. Uh, but but you're absolutely right that there has been a broader shift, especially since the Energy Department came out with their conclusion of people, I, I guess, in the Democratic coalition waking up and going, oh, I, I guess enough. There's enough legitimacy, legitimacy to this. It, it's not going to be stigmatized anymore. And again, it never made any sense to stigmatize mm -hmm. it versus the other theory. It's not a racist theory compared to the other theory. Um, the Chinese government, by the way, I just want to remind everyone, maintains that neither of these things mm -hmm. are the cause of the pandemic, neither a lab leak nor the, the wet market. They maintain that the wet market was uh, an early super spreader event, but they, they deny any responsibility for China for the origins of the pandemic entirely. So you can't, you can't appease the Chinese government regardless of which way you go on this one. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I have seen some kind of skeptics on the left who were are very open to the idea of lively theory and have talked about it for some time, yeah. ask questions about why the sudden shift now, whether this is part of a growing interest, a growing escalation in rhetoric that is antagonistic to China, and, and whether it's beating the drums of war and setting the stage for that particular conflict. But that's potentially I, rather premature. You, you might be— Correct about that, although it, it is hard not to antagonize the Chinese government on these issues because I do think there is there is blame in either situation, and they just they, they refuse to take on any blame here. Not blame for the people of China or Chinese culture, or sure. but, but blame for the Chinese government. And, and there might be blame for our government yeah, too, and we should absolutely sure. call that out. As if Dr. that Red I want it said. right, I want it very rigorously investigated. Yeah, and as we learn from the Twitter files, just because something is politically inconvenient doesn't mean a fact isn't true or that it's disinformation. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, we will have more rising after this.